Hi friends, Allie here. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making the Country Cottage Mittens. These feature the same amazing texture as my other Country Cottage patterns. If you haven't checked those out yet, I'll leave a link down below to the collection. But these mittens are super warm and cozy and they work up fast. They'll make great gifts and the pattern has five sizes ranging from toddler to adult large, so you can make them for anyone in the family. In this video, I'll be making the adult small size, so if you're making any of the other sizes, you can use this video as more of a reference, and you can find the free pattern for all of the sizes on my site, theturtletrunk.com. So let's head over to our supply list and let's get making. For yarn, you'll need a medium four weight yarn. I'm gonna be using I Love This Yarn in the color Light Sage. And for the adult small size, you'll need approximately 192 yards for two mittens. You'll also need a five millimeter or H hook, scissors, and a yarn needle. You can check the description box down below for a gauge pattern, as well as the measurements for the adult small size. We're going to be working from the fingertip down, so we're going to begin by making a slip knot and chaining seven. To make a chain, you're going to yarn over and pull that loop through the loop on your hook, and we're going to repeat that for a total of seven times. Now we're going to be working back into our chain, starting in the second chain from the hook. We're going to work two single crochets in the second chain from the hook. To single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Now we're going to work one single crochet in each of the next four chains. and you should have one chain left on the end. And in that last chain, we are going to work four single crochets. Now we're gonna be working on the opposite side of the chain, and we're going to work a single crochet in each of the next four chains. I'm gonna be working around that small tail end there. That just saves me from having to weave it in later. And in the last chain, we are going to work two single crochets. You should have a total of 16 stitches around. And now we're going to join to the top of the first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. The chains we work at the beginning of the rows do not count as stitches throughout the whole pattern. And now we're on to round two. And for round two, we are going to work two single crochets into the first stitch. So working it into the same stitch as our chain one. And then we are going to single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Then we're going to be working two single crochets into each of the next two stitches. Then work one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. And in the last stitch, we're gonna work two single crochets. You should now have a total of 20 stitches. We're gonna to join to the top of the first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. Now on to round three, we're gonna work one more increase row. So we're gonna work two single crochets into the first stitch, then single crochet into each of the next eight stitches.
and then we're going to work two single crochets in each of the next two stitches and then single crochet in each of the next eight stitches. And in the last stitch, we're gonna work two single crochets. And now our stitch count is at 24. And we're gonna to join to the top of the first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. Now on to round four. We are just going to work a round of single crochets. So we're just gonna work one single crochet into each stitch around. At the end of round four, our stitch count is still at 24. We're gonna to join to the top of the first single crochet with a slip stitch, and we are done working the fingertips, so now we're gonna move on to the hand. So we're gonna begin round five by chaining two, and then we're going to double crochet into each stitch around. To double crochet, yarn over and insert your hook into the first stitch. Pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So we're just gonna work one double crochet into each stitch around for round five. At the end of round five, our stitch count is still at 24. We're gonna join and chain two. And now round six is where we're gonna start working the texture for our Country Cottage mittens. So in the very first stitch, we're gonna be working around the post of the stitch instead of at the top of the stitch. And we're gonna be working a front post double crochet. So that's just working a double crochet around the post of the stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook beside the post, working around the back and to the front again. And then we're gonna work a double crochet. So yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. And there we worked a front post double crochet. And now we're just gonna work a regular double crochet into the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat those two stitches all the way around for round six. So front post double crochet around the next stitch. And then double crochet into the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat those two stitches all the way around for round six. So front post double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. Your last stitch of the round should be a double crochet and our stitch count is still at 24. We're gonna to join to the top of the first front post double crochet with a slip stitch and chain two. And there you can see our beautiful texture starting to form. And now for round seven, we are gonna be working the same two stitches, but opposite. So we're gonna be working the double crochets into the front post double crochets from the previous round and the front post double crochets into the double crochets from the previous round. So in our first stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet. 
and then we're going to work a front post double crochet into the second stitch. And we're going to repeat those two stitches all the way around, double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch. I'm just coming up to the end of round seven and our last stitch of round seven should be a front post double crochet. I'm gonna join and chain two. And here's what we're looking like so far. Now for round eight, we're just gonna repeat what we did for round six. So we're going to front post double crochet around the first stitch. And then double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat those two stitches all the way around. So front post double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. I'm just coming up to the end of round eight. I'm going to work a double crochet in my last stitch, then join and chain two. And now for the next six rounds, so rounds nine to 14, we're just going to repeat rounds seven and eight. So those last two rounds we worked, we're just going to keep repeating them until the end of round 14. So we're gonna start with our double crochet into the first stitch and then front post double crochet into the next stitch, repeat that around. And then for the next round, we're gonna repeat round eight and we're just gonna keep doing that until we reach the end of round 14. So I'm gonna continue on and I'll catch up with you guys at the end of round 14. So I'm just coming up to the end of round 14. I'm gonna join and chain two. And here is what our mitten is looking like so far. So now we're on to round 15 and this is where we're going to create our thumb hole. So your mitten should fit like this, should hit just the bottom of your thumb. Feel free to repeat um, round seven and eight as many times as you need to get the right length. So to begin, we are going to work a double crochet into the first stitch, and then front post double crochet into the second stitch. And we're going to repeat those two stitches four more times. So you should have a total of 10 stitches across. And now we're gonna create the thumb hole. So we're going to chain four. And we're gonna skip the next four stitches. So in the fifth stitch, we are going to double crochet. So there's our thumb hole. So you should have skipped four, worked into the fifth stitch there. And now we're going to front post double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're just going to double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch. And we're just gonna repeat those two stitches the rest of the way around.
We're going to join to the top of the first double crochet with a slip stitch and chain two. And now on to round 16. We are going to front post double crochet into the first stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat those two stitches four more times. Now we're at our chain four for our thumb hole. So we are going to double crochet into each chain. So you need to work a total of four double crochets across the chain. And then we're going to front post double crochet around the next stitch. Then double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat those last two stitches the rest of the way around. So front post double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch all the way around. At the end of the round, we're going to join and chain two. And here's what our mitten is looking like so far. And we're going to work three more rounds before moving on to the cuff. So for rounds 17 to 19, we are going to repeat rounds 7 and 8. So we're going to repeat round 7, then repeat round 8, and then repeat round 7 one more time. So for round 17, we're going to repeat round 7, which starts with the double crochet into the first stitch and then front post double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to repeat that all the way around and then repeat round eight one more time and then round seven one more time. So I'm going to continue on and then I'm going to catch up with you guys when I reach the end of round 19. So I'm just coming up to the end of round 19 and I'm going to join so here is what our mitten is looking like so far. So we finished the hand portion. So now we're going to move on to the cuff and we're going to do the thumb at the very end. So your mitten should now fit at the wrist. And now we're going to work the cuff and the cuff is going to be about a two inch fold over cuff. So it's going to be um, unfolded. It's going to be four inches long. And when you fold it over, it's going to be about two inches long but you can feel free to make your cuff as long or short as you want. We're going to start off by working a chain and you can work your chain as long as you want. So we are going to chain 16 and this is gonna make our cuff about four inches long in total. And then when you fold it over, it's gonna be about two inches. So we're gonna chain 16. And then for row one, we're going to work back into our chain, starting in the second chain from the hook. We are going to single crochet. And then single crochet into each chain down.
should have a total of 15 single crochets across. Now we're gonna turn and look at the last round we worked for the hand, and we're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches. So we're not counting that very first stitch that we worked our chain into. So the next two stitches we're going to slip stitch into. And then we're going to turn and then work back into our row one for our cuff. So turn your work. And now working back into um, our 15 single crochets, we're going to be working into the back loop only from now on. So when you look at the top of your stitches, that front loop there is your front loop, and then the one furthest away is your back loop. So working into the back loop only, we are going to single crochet into each stitch across. When you reach the end of the row, we're going to chain one and turn. Now working back down the cuff again, we are going to single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across. So you have a total of 15 stitches across and now back to the last round of our hand we are going to slip stitch in the next two stitches and then turn and now we're just going to keep repeating rows two and three all the way around so that's going to take us to the end of row 23 so I'm just going to continue on repeating rows two and three. Make sure you always have 15 single crochets across. Sometimes it's easy to miss that last stitch um, that's closest to the hand. So just make sure you're keeping track of your count to make sure you always have 15 stitches across. So I'm just going to keep repeating rows two and three until the end of row 23 and I'll catch up with you guys at the end of row 23. So I'm just reaching the end of row 23. So this is what we're looking like so far. We're at the base of our cuff by the hand. So there's one stitch left from that last round. So I'm going to slip stitch into that last stitch. And then I'm going to turn my glove so that we can join the two ends of our cuff here. So we're gonna slip stitch across to join these two ends. So we're gonna be working in that beginning chain and into our last row. And on the last row, we are gonna be working in the back loops only. So make sure that you line up your stitches, so your beginning chains and your stitches, so that you're working into the corresponding stitch so that they line up. So starting in that beginning chain and then the back loop only of our last row. We're going to slip stitch the two sides together. And we're just going to do that all the way across. So working into our starting chain and then the back loop only from our last row, just slip stitch all the way up.
Once you're done seaming up the sides, we can tie off our yarn. So I'm just gonna chain one and cut off my yarn. I'm gonna leave about a four to six inch long tail, just so long enough so I can weave it in. So I'm just gonna pull out my hook and I'm going to weave in my tail end. I'm gonna weave it in on this front side here since I'm gonna be folding over my cuff. So I'm just gonna weave in my tail end and then we will move on to the thumb. So once your cuff is complete, you can fold it over if you'd like and here's what we're looking like so far. So now let's move on to the thumb. So we're gonna be working the thumb separate and then sewing it on. So you need to grab your yarn again and your hook. We're gonna be working from the tip of the thumb down. So we're gonna start by making a magic circle. So wrapping your tail end of your yarn around your pointer finger and your middle finger, you're gonna wrap it around once. When you bring it around the second time, you're gonna cross it over and bring it to the back of your hand. And then take your hook, go under the first loop, grab the second loop and pull it under, flip up your yarn. We're gonna hold down that loop so we can secure it with a chain one. So there is our magic circle, and now we're gonna be working inside the circle around both those loops of yarn, both those strands of yarn. <laughs> and we are going to single crochet five into the circle. So working around both those strands of yarn, we're gonna single crochet five times inside the circle. I'm gonna take that short tail end there and pull it tight to close up our circle. And we're gonna be working in a continuous round so we're not going to join. We're gonna work our first stitch straight into that first stitch from the previous round. So I'm going to single crochet two times in the first stitch. And I'm gonna grab a stitch marker so I don't lose my place. So if you have one handy, you can use that. You can also use a small scrap of yarn as well if you don't have a stitch marker. So I'm just gonna mark where I worked my first stitch so I don't lose my place. So I'm going to work another single crochet into that same stitch. And we're just gonna work two single crochets into each stitch around for round two. At the end of round two, our stitch count is now at 10. And again, we're not going to join, we're just going to work straight into that first stitch. And for rounds three, all the way through round 12, we are going to just work one single crochet into each stitch around. Again, I'm gonna use my stitch marker to mark my very first stitch. And we are just gonna work one single crochet into each stitch around, all the way to the end of round 12. So I'm just gonna continue on, working one single crochet into each stitch around until I reach the end of round 12. So I'll catch up with you guys at the end of round 12. So I've just reached the end of round 12, so I'm done with my thumb. Feel free to work more rounds if you need the thumb to be any longer. So now I'm going to tie off my yarn, leaving about a 12 inch long tail, and then we're going to sew it to our mitten. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, and then cut off my yarn, leaving a 12 inch long tail. Then I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and thread my yarn.
And I'm going to attach the thumb starting at the bottom of the thumb hole. It doesn't really matter um, where you start. I'm just going to try and put it where it's going to be, um, the join is going to be hidden more. And so we have eight stitches around our thumb hole, but we have 10 stitches around our thumb. So we are going to attach it to each stitch around the thumb hole, but then also work um, on either side in the posts of the two stitches um, on the right and left side of the thumb hole. So we're just gonna try and work it around as evenly as possible. So I'm gonna start by going through the bottom of the thumb hole, making sure I'm grabbing two loops and then I'm gonna go through the two loops of the thumb and I'm just going to sew those together. And then I'm gonna go back into the thumb hole working into the next stitch, grabbing two loops. If you only grab one loop, it's going to stretch out that stitch a bit and there's gonna be quite a large gap there. So you just wanna make sure you're grabbing two loops and that'll make it more secure. And then I'm gonna go into the next stitch from the thumb and we're just gonna keep repeating that around. So working in the next stitch of the hole through the thumb, there's gonna be one more stitch at the bottom of the thumb hole there. And so now that we're at the side of the thumb hole, I'm going to be working through the post of the stitch I'm gonna kind of attach it to the top of the post rather than right through the middle because that's gonna pull on that stitch a bit. So I'm gonna work it through the top, making sure I'm grabbing two loops and then going through the next stitch of the thumb. And then now we're at the top of the thumb hole. So we have four stitches across there. So we'll just sew through those next four stitches and the next four stitches of the thumb. And then we just have the last stitch. So working again in the post, I'm gonna work at, uh, near the bottom of the post of the thumb hole and then into the last stitch on the thumb. So once your thumb is all attached, we are going to secure with a few knots. So I'm just gonna work those knots at the bottom of the thumb so it's gonna be hidden. And then I'm gonna bring my yarn to the inside of the mitten to hide that knot there. And we can weave in our end. And if you find that the thumb is pulling on any of the stitches, you can weave your yarn around those stitches to kind of bring them in. So I'm just going to weave in my tail end on the inside of my mitten. And then we are all done with our first mitten. So now we're done with our first country cottage mitten. So now you can just repeat the instructions from the beginning to make your second mitten. Thank you so much for following along. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the other patterns in the Country Cottage collection if you enjoyed this one. You can find the free written version of this pattern on my website as well as the ad-free, easy to print, and color-coded PDF version in my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. I'll leave links to all those down below. And be sure to tag me in your photos on Instagram so I can see your finished mittens. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.